Hey, y'all. Let me address it now. There is a high probability I'm going to get choked up several times explaining this. So, like, I'll just knock that out early on. Um, and y'all know I get emotional from time to time, but y'all ain't never seen me, like, full-fledged cry on a video. I just might this go around. <sighs> okay. <laughs> and I should, I mean, in, in all... In all logic, I shouldn't be this emotional, but then I should be this emotional. So <clears throat> let me just, I'm gonna just haphazardly explain it because I'm still in a state of shock. Um, I'm, on December 30th, 2017, I saw Big Bang live in South Korea. Okay, um, huh. I was invited by Frankie, aka Inappropriate K-Pop Mom, and her daughter, who is a prominent member of KCDC, you know, the really cool dance cover group from uh, Australia, and um, I... I had other plans <laughs> for the weekend. If you were watching my Instagram chat or if you were on Twitter when I was online that evening, like I, I, that weekend's plans was to go to Seoul and to uh, watch uh, the the performances for the idols on New Year's Eve. Like this was this was not in my plans. This wasn't in my plans at all. Um, I saw the price of the tickets and was like, oh, Jesus, no, I'm not going to be able to do that. And I knew that they were having two final shows in Seoul because I was keeping up with the news and I knew that Top wasn't going to be there and all that stuff. Like this was not on the list of things to do. So let's back it up. Let's back it up years ago. October 1st, 2012 was the day I got into K-pop and I got into it because of Big Bang. This is not a new story unless you are new to my channel. Even then, you can go back and watch KCON videos on my OMG KCON playlist and hear this story in its original form. So I'll condense it. I moved from Los Angeles to Houston, Texas on October 1st, 2012. I got settled into my room at my grandmother's house. I was looking for something to watch online. I found a K-drama, really not a big TV watcher. I watched a little bit of it. I really enjoyed it, but I found another one called Iris. Iris had top in it. Hadn't heard of people who was doing, you know, acting and music and everything like that outside of America. And I went down a rabbit hole. I was avoiding Fantastic Baby. I didn't get it. And um, I found the video for Bad Boy. I love that song. And I fell in love with Big Bang as an entirety because of that video and I drastically fell in love and can't get out of it with Choi Sung Hyun aka Top literally the moment that man walked down the stairs saying I can't change I literally my life my life was changed my life my life was changed I know this might sound like I'm just exaggerating to some of y'all I get that but like my life was freaking changed. I found out a few weeks after the fact that I had just missed the Alive Tour in Los Angeles when I moved. I didn't know who they were then, so I'm like, oh, I freaking missed it. I'll never get to see them. A few years later, they come back to America with the Made Tour. I risk my rent money to buy a ticket. I get a ticket for the Jersey Show several months in advance. And by the time it was time to secure a flight to get out there, not only could I not afford to, there were some changes at my work schedule in that time where I just couldn't get the time off. So that ticket haunted me. I'm like, you mean to tell me they getting ready to enlist and stuff and I got a ticket to see all five of them and I never will. I, I never will. So I just accepted it. It hurt. It hurt like hell. I never would. And then, um, then top enlists and then top risks his life and I'm in severe mourning about it and everything. I've seen G Dragon at K Kwan K Kwan <laughs> Kwan Jiang. <laughs> I've seen K Khan G Dragon twice and then I got the chance to see him at his own concert when it came to Houston the first time. 
Um, I saw Taeyang a few weeks after that. Then I got on a plane, came to Germany, came to Korea. Pff, I'm here, okay? I'm here. I see on a website, trazy.com, T-R-A-Z-Y. Great website, by the way. See that the concert tickets are on there, and they start at a price bracket that I just didn't have the money at the time. They were in the hundreds. Hundreds. I just didn't have it. It is what it is. I get a random message from Frankie, like, hey, um... I know we're supposed to meet up this weekend because you're coming into Seoul or whatnot for the holiday and you know we're here she spent a week here please check out her uh, channel and, and the vlogs and whatnot from when she was here I'll put the link down in the description <coughs> long story short her son didn't want to go to the concert because it was standing tickets only and she had no one else to give it to so she gave me the ticket I stood and watched Kings. Ah, I stood and watched Big Bang in South Korea in the fifth year of me knowing about them. Like y'all, I just it's it's too much for me. Okay, <laughs> it's um it's absolutely too too much for me. Um. It's, it's just it's just too much um and I'm getting emotional just thinking about it like I don't think oh I don't think you can understand the magnitude of seeing something in person that literally changed your life I don't I don't have the I don't have the words for it. When I moved from California to Texas, my life was in total upheaval. Everything had been flipped on its head. And there's a lot of things that happened along the path, a lot of which you all were there via YouTube to be able to be a part of. Um, I had written down that I wanted to be out of Texas and out of America within five years. The path didn't look really uh, manageable. It didn't look like a lot of stuff would happen. But the thing that kept me motivated, kept me going so much is just the passion that I have for music and for the beauty of life. And, and these boys, their music, not even boys, these men, their music was in the, the background soundtrack of my life and exposed me to a world and, and career opportunities and things of that sort that I had no idea even existed until I heard their music, until I heard them. So to go from being, <laughs> to go from being an international fan of one of music's most dynamic and trailblazing groups. And you, a black chick, born in Houston, raised in Detroit, get on a flight, a one way, <laughs> to a country smaller than the state of Indiana, and you're in Seoul, the place that they are from, the place that reared them both out of group and in group. And you're standing there listening to all five of them, even though four were in attendance. Y'all, there's it's no words for it. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't even know about doing anything out here. I wouldn't even know anything about how you wave, aside from Cognum style. If it weren't for them and the obsession I had for the music they were making and, and everything that they bring to the table, Top wasn't there. And and by the grace of God, I'm kind of glad he wasn't because I would have crumbled. I would have died at that concert. I'm not going to even lie. <coughs> However, it did break my heart quite a bit that I didn't see a lot of things uh, outside the venue promoting him. Yes, if circumstances were more normal, he'd be, you know, just serving his military stuff at this time. We wouldn't have the additional back history, if you will, the stigma of what took place. But I only saw maybe three things displayed for him. Everything else was for the rest of the guys. It was still very emotional to see it walking around the stadium and uh, 
seeing all of the wreaths from like winter and icon and act on musician and and fan clubs and stuff it was insane these are things that i've only watched on youtube youtube is the only access i ever had to it or v live app when they did one of their performances for the maid concert uh one of the nights on there and i stayed up and watched it with christina listened with christina um i grabbed the only big bang vip crown i can find that has anything with top on it and it was literally a sticker they stuck his name on there it is what it is i was gonna rep my ultimate bias no matter what i see frankie we talk we chat whatever her 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 daughter and i make our way into the venues she's sitting up in the balconies we're down on the floor Everything is playing. They playing the videos. You know, normal stuff that happens before a concert. For those of you who've never been to a concert, usually they play the artist's music and or videos prior to. Then all the festivities start. It started and I'm excited. And I'm just like, dang, they really here, you know, having a moment and whatnot. The first song that they played that had Top's verse in it, they song turned around and rapped it. So I got a little emotional. It's like, oh, that's so cute. <sighs> they kept going. They did another song. Gets the top part. They let the audio play and whatnot. So I'm getting choked up. Everyone has their solo moments and whatnot. G-Dragon does his solo. He rocking, jamming his song and whatnot. And on his shirt, on his shirt, he had this panel jeans, a leather jacket, and a t-shirt. And Top's face was on his t-shirt. And he talked about it briefly. Like, you know, Big Bang is five, not four. You know, he might not be here, but he's here with me. I'll show you my shirt just so y'all know. They didn't forget him. So much so that at certain parts in the concert, when the songs that started with Top or he had a prominent part, they would play it or, um, you know, make sure that they're spacing on stage. Ooh, they're spacing on stage. Still had his space in mind, you know, and then like... You got all this going on just a few weeks after we lost Jung Hyun. And it's just overly emotional. You know, it's just, it's way too emotional. Um, they sing, uh, If You, which I did a first listen reaction to on my channel. And, um, you know, it starts with Topper or whatnot. So they have this lighthouse spinning around doing it when it's his part. And then the guys are singing, singing they behinds off, you know, and, um, I turn and I'm like, y'all, if they play Haru Haru next, I'm going to freaking perish. Sure enough. <laughs> sure enough. Oh, the drums. Duh, 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 band six. Like, I'm just, I'm all over the place, y'all. Band six are beasts. Okay. Um, Sure enough, the drum cadence plays and the audience just knew on cue. I never thought I'd hear it in my life. I never ever 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 thought i would hear it in real life and i recorded it just a snippet of it i just un haru haru if you're not a big bang fan haru haru is our song with them i'm so freaking emotional it's our song with them and to you know spend the past few years watching YouTube videos and concert clips and whatnot of just how amazing it is to hear the fandom sing it along with them or sing it to them. Like, like I said, never in my wildest dreams. And I'm probably going to crumble once I play this. So, <sighs> The whole stadium. Oh, I'm okay right now until we get back to the chorus. Never thought I'd hear this.
Okay, so yeah, after I bowed my eyes out, <laughs> um, we sing Haru Haru with them or whatever. And, you know, it gets to a point where they do a montage of just the history of their career up until this this phenomenal point in time. And, like, when you know these, these K-pop groups too well, <laughs> like, you literally know your favorite member by, like, like a piece of a eyebrow hair, and I mean especially top eyebrow senior. I've been calling him that for years. Like <coughs> it started with tops frame, and then them, and just showing the VIPs around the world and all the places that they've gone and whatnot, and how language didn't mean nothing in terms of impact, and uh. It was just a beautiful thing to see. I'm sure there's links of it somewhere online. Like, uh, I'm sure it is. Okay, we'll get through all that. I'm emotional as F and all of that. And we eventually get back to the jamming songs. We do our thing. Then we get to Last Dance. And, uh, uh, first off, first off, let me back up. We did Fantastic Baby. The song drives me crazy. But when it got to the top part and everybody went, Hi, Sunny, I was like, ah! Okay, fast forward towards the end. Last song is Last Dance. That's the name of the tour anyway. It was only two concert stops left. They were calling it Last Dance. I got eyelashes in my eyes from crying. This is so ridiculous. Um, the song Last Dance ends with Top. It was the last song he did. And it was, you know, basically his way of saying, I'll see y'all later for the uh, Army Enlistment stuff. He has to do it. There's no getting around it. Every Korean man in Korea has to. Well, I mean, there's some slight stipulations to getting around it, but ultimately it's exceptionally mandatory. So it gets to it. You know, the guys are singing. You can tell they're genuinely emotional and whatnot. I saw videos of the, the final concert on the 31st and Daesung was crying in the process. It's just, it's a lot to handle. It's a lot to take in. It gets to Top's part and the whole freaking stage the two massive screens turn into video of him at one of the stops from the May concert doing his part. <sighs> Yo. <sighs> like the magnitude at that moment of realizing we could have lost both him and Jung Hyun. It was just too much. It was way too much. Like, they give so much to their fans that sometimes we forget how much they have to sacrifice. And it's, it was just, it was way too much. Like, they both could be gone. And that's just, that's just how it felt watching that part of the concert. Then it was just over. It was just over. You were just on your own and just move on out with whatever emotions you had. My eyes looked like this the whole time because if I wasn't crying, then I was on the cusp of crying. My eyes was red. I had my voice magically for a while. I was having a blast singing along, proudly singing along both correctly and incorrectly in English and in Korean. Didn't care. It was a blast. I was by some fans who were hardcore. They song fans and they was losing their mind every time he took the side of the stage they came close to where we were i posted some of the video clip and uh pictures on my instagram account the instagram link is in my description too if you've never looked in my description you probably should i'm gonna start leaving weird stuff in there but that was it like ultimately i just wanted to cry on camera for y'all this is basically what this was like i just i don't know what else to tell you it was too much for me but like it was it was too much it was just it was too much it was right up there with seeing CL when she came to America. And CL is my ultimate bias, you know, my ultimate female bias. And then Hina is right under her, who was previously with Four Minute. And, you know, y'all know the guys. Top is the ultimate bias. And then Jackson of God 7 is right underneath that. But uh, it was a maze balls, okay? 
It really was. I thought I had something more of substance to give you all, but I just, I got so freaking choked up several times during this. This is, uh, I would like to say this is not the life that I live, but apparently I do because I'm crying on camera. My thug life ticket could be, you know, revoked. My thug life card could be snatched. <laughs> oh, but it made me so happy, y'all. Wow level of, of of profound happiness that I'll never forget for as long as I live and I probably won't be able to listen to that haru haru clip anymore like I got almost three minutes worth of them singing but I just can't I can't even listen to it if I'm gonna be getting snotty like I did right here then I can't so um have you ever had a concert just knock the wind out of you like this or saw one of your favorite groups and just you just couldn't like you just could not I'd like to hear about it makes me feel better for sharing my my story with y'all that is it I'm, I'm gonna go blow my nose now i have nothing else to do bye y'all